think my generation should be called the greedy generation. We received, but we did not give back. My generation has coasted along. We borrowed money from foreign countries and left the debt for uh, younger people to pay off. The best gift we can give to our children now is to uh, show them how to reform the tax system so they will be treated more fairly. Mason Gaffney is one of the world's foremost authorities on the economics of land. His mission is to alert the people of America about the policies that would deliver sustainable economic growth in the 21st century. If we don't change the tax system to draw more revenue from land and natural resources, and if we persist in uh, taxing wages and salaries at a much higher rate, than property income of all kinds. We will encourage more outsourcing, increase unemployment, lower public revenues, never pay off the national debt, and essentially commit national suicide. The present tax system is heavily biased against workers as such, and workers includes people with white collars, doctors, even lawyers most of the time, they, we, are taxed at higher rates in order that people who get their money from property uh, can be taxed at lower rates or not at all. People who inherit property, for example, uh, pay no tax whatever on the inheritance. Better than that, all the capital gains that accrued before they got the property are forgiven forever. It's called the angel of death provision. People who receive dividends pay a maximum of 15%. People who get capital gains generally pay no tax at all through a variety of loopholes, but the maximum they pay is 15%. You and I not only pay higher personal income taxes, we also pay payroll tax. These are a, a few of the many ways in which the tax system is biased against workers. One bias favors speculators who keep orange orchards that are the equivalent of urban slums. The land, says the professor, should grow homes for families to live in. Instead, people are forced to live on barren hillsides. What makes land on a hillside like this valuable anyway? It's more expensive to build here it's more expensive to drive up here, it uses a lot of gasoline. It's uh, more expensive to pump water up here. It's more expensive to do a lot of things up here. The land is not as stable. The hillside above you is likely to slump down on you someday. There are lots of problems. Why do people build up here when there's flat land down below? Well, there are at least two reasons. One is the general increase of population, and the land down below gets filled up. But we've seen it isn't all filled up. It's held speculatively out of use. So uh, what else might bring people up here? Uh, if they're buyers, it's the thought that the land will rise in value even more while they're sitting on it. We need to make use of the capital that's already been sunk into infrastructure. We're standing in an unfinished subdivision. The streets have been built. The water supply has been uh, made available. Uh, long pipes, huge storage reservoirs have been built at great expense. Uh, electric power lines, gas lines are all available. Streets, newly paved streets are here with sidewalks curbs and gutters. That's all infrastructure, but that's all here. Lots have been graded, but not built upon. Other lots haven't even been graded, and yet they are served by the existing infrastructure. So we should put money into uh, improving those lots that haven't been built on, 
and creating jobs that will let people have the money to occupy the houses uh, that have already been built. That may also involve, should involve, lowering the asking prices of these houses. The asking prices are often inflated by a speculative psychology on the part of the owner who thinks the land will come back in value because land values always rise. So the owner of an empty house who is not selling it is another kind of land speculator. We should discourage that by putting a tax on the value of the land, building a fire under the owners of underutilized land. And with, by underutilized land, I include land that's underneath houses that have already been built. Because it's not only the house that's idle and wasting, it's the land under it. Now what's fair about all this? The land is rising in value. The people who buy in early get a free ride. Other people don't. So the benefits of the unearned increment of land values are unequally distributed. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. From his garden in California, Professor Gaffney watches the sunset. But he is resolved that the predators of his generation will not drive America into the ground. The reason that the federal income tax, which includes the corporate income tax, does not get the amount of revenue it should from property is a matter of accounting trickery. And the proof of the pudding is that uh, all of the income property in the United States, which is worth trillions of dollars on the market, is apparently being run as a great charity. This property uh, reports taxable income of zero. I repeat, zero from trillions of dollars worth of uh, taxable property. This is uh, the result of successful accounting trickery.